but uh, yeah, today we're going to talk about transfer art paper process, and I'm going to show you three pieces that I've done with it, and tell you a little bit about them. Okay, so uh, this first one, uh, this is uh, the malt shop. Uh, this is a actual place in Allen. No, I'm sorry, Anna, Anna. Um, and it's actually right at the border between Anna and Melissa. And a cool little place. It's a drive-in, like the old style, old fashioned kind. They've had the sign for forever, and I thought it was cool. Um, I also took pictures of the building itself, but I wasn't as thrilled with those images. But this one I liked, because I like old signs. Um, so this is one of the things I thought would look cool using this transfer art paper process. So um, I did it. I'm going to take it out of the frame uh, so you can actually see it a little better if I can. It's in there pretty good. Oh, this will be fun. If I can't get this out, it's going to be a little embarrassing. <laughs> I may have to get tools. <laughs> there we go. No. Well, the good news is it's in there really good. It's not going to like fall out. Okay, I got it now. All right. So, here it is. So, I'm going to pull this a little closer so you can see it a little better. Um, so, this is the malt shop. And uh, I don't know if you can see the texture or not. There you go. So you can see it has a texture to it. Uh, the paper I printed on has a light texture to it. I don't know if you can see that or not. Uh, but this is uh, Aurora Fine Arts uh, natural paper. So it's a fine art acid-free paper. So it'll last forever. So that's really cool. Um, and you can just print on this, like with the inkjet, but the way this transfer art paper thing works is you uh, you print it on the transfer paper, okay? It's kind of like a film, okay? And then you apply it to the real paper uh, with an iron. It's kind of like an iron-on, okay? I know that maybe makes it sound kind of cheap, but it's, it's legit. It's a real thing, all right? Um, and what I like about it is the way the colors turn out. Okay, and the texture. So when you iron it onto the fine art paper, which already has a little bit of texture to it, um, you get even more texture. I don't know if you can see it or not, how well that, there we go. So yeah, I think you can see it there. So it gives it a cool texture. And the other thing I like about it is this is a one of a kind, right? So, I mean, I could do this all day long. I could print these and iron them on same process, same paper, but every one of these is going to look different, uh, which is why I sign and number it. Uh, normally with like inexpensive prints that I do, I don't sign or number them. But these are unique. So every one of these that I make is going to be one of a kind. Uh, and if you can see, I don't know if you can see or not, but there are little like inconsistencies because Every time you print it, it's going to go on the transfer art paper a little different. And every time you iron it, it's going to go on the art paper a little different. Uh, because the heat, you know, how much heat I use, how long I iron it on there. Uh, all those things are factors that uh, vary and are going to make each one of these unique and different. Which is why I feel like I can sign and number them. Uh, because I can make another one of these today, try to follow the same process, and it would look different. It, it just would. Um, there's a, a few places where, you know, it didn't quite stick. Like, like I don't know if you can see right there. Right there, the little, it's like a white dot, right? If you could see it in person, you'd see it. But it's where the it didn't really go on, right? It didn't actually adhere to the paper. So it's little things like that that I, I think make it really cool. And the color, uh, it has more of a vintage look and feel to it. Because the, these, these colors, um, if I showed you the digital file um, or a regular print, uh, the colors are much more vivid than this. So it kind of mutes the colors, gives it kind of a tone, uh, and makes it look kind of old and antique which I like, right? Uh, the mats I use are archival acid-free mats, right? 
So it's all good stuff. All right, so there's that one. And I want to show you a couple others, all right? So this is a blue bonnet shot I did. Uh, this one's actually on my website. I'm going to take it out of the frame again if I can. So you can see it without the glass glare, which I hate. Of course, this one doesn't want to come out either. <laughs> there we go. All right, here we go. So this is a blue bonnet shot I did. And you can see again, the, the colors are, are beautiful, but yet a little muted. And it's got a texture to it, which I think cools. It, it gives it like a dimension, right? And again, signed and numbered. It's a, it's one of one because there's, even if I, like I said, if I made another one exactly like it, it still wouldn't be exactly like it. Um, this one's actually on uh, my website right now, uh, so it is out there available. There you can see the texture to it, and I, I just think it's really cool. It kind of gives it a three-dimensional uh, appearance to it. Uh, again, acid-free archival map. Um, I got into doing blue bonnets uh, this past year because I've like lived in Texas my whole life, right? And photographer for, for most of that, and I didn't have any blue bonnet pictures, and I was like. This is just wrong. So um, it became my mission in uh, 2020 to uh, get some blue bonnet pictures, and so I did. Uh, but on this one, you can see, like right here, where they didn't quite go, you know. So, so there's the blue bonnet. I got one more to show you. And this one is a cool shot. It's uh, black and white. And this is this one you're gonna actually see more about how again these things are hard to get open what i was thinking ah there we go not to cut my hands <laughs> these things open um ah. almost there here we go okay so this is a lone life oak on the prairie image that i did this is actually uh shot in mckinney uh, at the, yeah, I can't remember the name of it now, uh, but there's a park up there, kind of in uh, north west McKinney. And uh, this is actually black and white. I don't know if you can see, but it's got a tone to it. It's got kind of a sepia to it. That was not on the image. Okay, that, that's a result of the TAP process, both the, the transfer art paper material as well as the ironing on uh, to the paper. Uh, gave it kind of this sepia tone to it, which I love. Um, and again, it's it's got a texture to it. I don't know if you can see it. And, you know, it's got some minor imperfections, which I think make it even cooler. All right. And again, we got the uh, acid-free uh, fine art mat. Um, but anyway, this is one of my favorite shots. It looks cool in color, too. Uh, this is actually one of the most, most popular images, uh, but this is a black and white version of it, uh, which I think is, is equally cool uh, as the color version. Uh, this one's also on my website. The other thing I wanted to show you real quick is I just take these in here. These are not mounted on a board or anything. So let's say you bought this and uh, it looks great in your house. Um, you can hang these up. Uh, they have a hook on the back, uh, a little loop so you can hang it up, or just a table stand. So if you want to just put it on your coffee table, you can do that, or you can hang it on the wall. It's better to go either way. Uh, but let's say you repaint your room and you want to change the mat. Uh, you can just take the tape off and put it under the mat, put it back in the frame, and you're good to go. So uh, there's some flexibility in that. But I just wanted to share this process with you guys because I think it's cool. I'm going to try to do some more stuff like that. These are small. These are 5x7 prints in an 8x10 frame. Uh, I'm going to try to do some bigger stuff um, if I can get some <laughs> good feedback from people. Uh, I really haven't had anybody say that they love these or don't love these. Um, so I just don't know. you know. But I, I'm probably going to try to play with this some more. Maybe even try to do some montages. Uh, that's really challenging for me, but I've heard that that's a cool thing to do with this process is 
uh, do some image montages, right? But um, the Lube on it, and this one are on my website right now for $45. Uh, the malt shop one is not. Of course, there's other stuff on my website. Uh, I'd love you to take a look at that stuff. Uh, if you think this is cool and you see another picture on my website that think, ooh, that would be cool if David did it with that process, hey, let me know. Uh, again, I'm trying to experiment with new things. And so if you get an idea, I'd love to hear it. Um, love to try something else uh, like that. The only thing I, I think if I did a picture that was like had a lot of black in it, like some of the stuff I do, the especially the sunsets, it's got some bright colors, but then a lot of black or dark areas. That's probably not going to work very good with this. Um, I haven't tried it, but I don't think so. Uh, but anyway, uh, I think that's about it. So anyway, thanks for joining me today. Uh, if you have any questions about this process or um, anything photography related, uh, let me know. Love to talk. So I uh, hope you have a great day.